Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to one of my favourite people. Matt Goss, how are you? Good, mate. It's good to see you again. Hey, listen, this is fantastic. Well, normally you're in your town, which is Las Vegas. You're there at Caesars with the Gossie Room. And now you're in my time, where I live, Nottingham. Congratulations. I'm really actually glad to be up here. You know, it's like to come out of Caesars Palace and see some Caesars properties, um, you know, in, in my homeland. It's actually nice to be part of the family and come do some really exclusive shows and obviously we just did London Palladium which was completely bananas and it's definitely up there in the top five gigs in my life like up there with Wembley Stadium it's like incredible the Palladium is a, is a beautiful venue as it is but you couldn't I had two guests I, they didn't even have seats it was like it was really like I've never seen anything like it it was very very emotional in, in the best best way what I love about this trip particularly, and you've come back occasionally over the last few years, although you've been focusing on Las Vegas, I'd never seen such momentum and warmth and interest in you. It's like people have finally cottoned on, A, you're an amazing singer, and B, you've got an act that we really aren't doing here anymore, and we need you back. Well, that, that means more to me than you could possibly imagine. I always, when the Brits come and see my show at Caesars Palace in Vegas, and they say we're proud of you, Matt. It's like it blows me away, and I think they always get surprised when I'm when I'm so humbled by that that comment. You know, I might live abroad and I might travel. All, I mean, I do well over a hundred shows outside of my country every year for the last seven years, and um, but when anyone from my 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 country says we're proud of you, is I always try and explain to them when I go up into my room after the show that's what I think about and I'm a mother's son and you know when people from where you live and where you grew up and where you were born say they're proud of you it's like they don't have to say that so I'm always very humbled by that so thank you you're a stunning act and I first saw you I think three years ago when we first spoke and then we had lunch a couple of years ago and since then so much has happened. Firstly, of course, condolences about your mother. I know it's been a hugely testing year. Are you getting any solace or is there anything that can get you out of this situation? I know you've taken it very bad. Yeah, I mean, it's a strange thing. I'm, I'm a very private man and I think that's one of the reasons why I'm still able to do what I do. I don't really wear... Uh, my pri- private life on my sleeve. Nobody really knows, and I like it, like I like it that way. But I felt, and I'm still actually genuinely, and I've no, I've I've no concern about being honest about how I feel about my mother. She was my best friend, and the best way I've said it, I've said it before. But there's a gaping hole in my life, and I've made a decision that I'm not going to put a rug over that hole. Otherwise, I could fall through it again and do myself more damage. I have to as a man while I'm travelling the world um, you know there's talk of Wembley next year and um, the Sydney Opera House in Australia this year um, I've just renewed my contract with Caesars Palace this year um, these are incredible things you know talk of also a movie in March I'm first movie um I'm just a simple London boy from Lewisham, you know what I mean? I was born in Lewisham Hospital. And she was my anchor. You know, it doesn't matter. Like I'm, I'll still walk into it. You know, I have beautiful hotel rooms and I travel in, in style and I'm just... Nothing matters quite as much as it did when mum was around because mum was the one that was genuinely interested in my life and she saw the good in me and... Um, and no agenda, of course. That's the thing about mums. They're not playing the game like people are in the business. Well, I have to be honest with you, mate. I don't really... I don't really have to... I don't worry about an agenda because most people I attract have already found their own skin. I'm very, very comfortable in my skin now, as you are, I can see. You know, and... You know, we've... we've you know, we've... You know, you're it's so easy to talk to and that's because you're you're a man you know where you are and there's no getting away from it now we're old bastards and we're <laughs> but we're still uh, we're still still keeping ourselves in shape I box for 14 years now I, I box three times a week and I keep myself very able-bodied pride myself in that my granddad always wanted me to make sure I could take care of myself and so did my mum and, and uh, to go back to your question um you got to put out, you got to understand that there was never a show in my life that I have done that I haven't spoken to my mum afterwards so I am just trying 
as a very hopefully humble human being just trying to find my way into the acceptance not only of the loss of my mum but I have no clue how to really mourn for her so that's all I've got to do it in between breaks and you know um, I don't know when I'm going to let all of this out but I, you know I, I went for a walk in St James Park the other day and I thought that was going to be a time where it was going to be a big kind of momentous thing but I actually ended up enjoying my time in the park and then I realised that my mum is everywhere you know it's not who knows I know that I'm going to have to let some of this out but it, I don't know when it's going to happen she loved you and adored you and loved your act as do your fans and they've shown you great love over recent months that I'm sure have got you through it um, when I see you on stage and I've said this to you before you are an incredibly spiritual emotional uh, guy who brings so much to your music how do you harness that now especially when you're in a difficult stage of your life or going through something as tough as this is it hard not to lose it you're stood on the stage at the Palladium there's one person you want to be there and she isn't how do you keep that together the Palladium gig was indescribable. Honestly, it was, I mean, it, it was indescribable. I mean, everybody, my fans always continue to turn up for me. And and, and I say that we're on a journey. I'm, I'm on a journey and I like to challenge my fans. You know, they've been to the Savoy in Black Tire. They've been at Royal Albert Hall m many times now. We just did the Palladium. You know, as I said, this talk of Wembley. I'm, there's a, there's a, a journey we're on together and I'm, um, I pride myself on watching them grow up and I'm sure that they would rather me be aware of them and where they are in their lives as well. I came out of a TV show the other day and there was 40 or 50, 16, 17 year olds. So to start acquiring new fans and um, that's just as exciting to me. So when I go on stage, I never dial it in. I never dial in a vocal. I could, as I said, I could be at the Royal Albert Hall at Wembley or I'm playing half a million people in Washington in June and um, I will sing the same tonight as I will in front of half a million people. You don't dial in a vocal, you sing your vocal from the deepest part of your heart. And now the good thing is the fellas come and with their scotch and their suits and the ladies come in their cocktail dresses and they can tell, I think, that I've got a lot of life under my belt and when we have a chat especially as intimate shows like this you uh, they'll leave feeling that they know me a bit better than they did when they walked in and I feel the same about them and again there's absolutely no way to phone it in when you've got that live band behind you they are stunning and in the gossy room and I know on tour they are the best in the business aren't they yeah I mean my band are incredible I mean they trust me implicitly and I trust them the reality is I mean they had no idea what the set list was going to be on the palladium I'll just shout it out and and I'll, I'll wing it. I have no idea what my set's going to be tonight. <laughs> but um, I'll feel it and I'll see what I feel like doing. And I think that's the thing. And, you know, just don't mess with the man with the microphone, you know? Right. <laughs> And then the voice. I mean, you've been here 10 days. You flew in. It's a long flight, that air conditioning and all that stuff. You're going from Vegas, which is 80, to England, which is currently one degree. What pressure is there on you vocally and how are you feeling? Um, I'm very tired, but my voice is a workhorse. My voice always turns up. I've been very, very blessed with my pipes. And they, you know, you know, Romy, my assistant, I'll be like, oh, she's like, you know, I don't know how you, sometimes she's like, I don't know how you get up on stage. I mean, I've had food poisoning, I've had, you know, the flu, I've had all kinds of stuff. And I, my voice always turns up for, for whatever reason. I think after, you know, well over 100 shows a year, um, your voice just it's one of the very very robust uh, parts of my of my of my being you know you are the ultimate showman and you got to do something talk about career highs this year you got to go on Loose Women I did warm up for them last year for a year it's quite a show that isn't it I love doing Loose Women it's one of the shows that I look forward to doing because they really know how to make you feel welcome and and it is like I mean, if you've got a bashful bone in your body, which I do, <laughs> you have to really try and leave that somewhere very, very far, far away from that studio because it's, uh, you just have to be, okay, I'm jumping off the edge. That is Loose Women. When you go into that show, you jump off the edge. It's like doing Jeremy Paxman, but just at the other end of the spectrum, isn't it? They can floor you equally as well. Yeah, I mean, I mean, they're always <laughs> lovely to me. I, that's the only side I know about Loose Women. They're always lovely to me. And, <laughs> 
that we always have such a laugh and I, I think like everyone I still fancy Cara Baldwin she's, she's fantastic and I admire her and um, I'm always sad when she's not on the panel is it fun being you? I mean, I see the reaction you get outside these theatres. I've stood there at the Gossy Room. I've never had it. We've spoke about this before. A deeply unattractive man that I am. This attention and the warmth and the love you get from the women. Does it ever become normal? Well, um, I think it's funny in the fact that the things that become normal, not to talk about the women or... I mean, I have so much... like. I like it the fact that the fellows and the ladies come to my show and they just get dressed up they've got their best suits on their best dresses They're, thankfully the ladies know that I like a great pedicure and a nice pair of legs, set of legs and <laughs> I mean it's nice for me I get to have a little bit of an ogle on stage at the beautiful women and the fellas flirt with all the ladies in the show and I have my dancers called the Dirty Virgin Dirty <laughs> Virgins I mean m m I will say my show is definitely like it's grown up and it's fun and it's got a lot of swagger it's a bit edgy as you know um, it's a bit cheeky and uh, the bottom line is it's uh, it's definitely a good night out that's why we're you know that's why I just renewed with Caesars and we're going into our seventh year I've seen that show I think four times now and it's sexy and it's fun and it's well lit and in the gossy room I mean you've got your own room do you still pinch yourself when you go down that Las Vegas boulevard and there it is Celine Dion Elton John Rod Stewart Shania Twain Mariah Carey Matt Goss yeah I mean I feel very very blessed I mean honestly but you know I, I will say that I do pride myself on my vocals and I do I sing from my heart and uh Nobody gave this or spoon fed this to me. It's been one hell of a journey, as you know. And um, but I do feel very, very blessed to to be in that company. And um, and honestly, I mean, I travel all over the world with this show. It's not just Caesars. And then to first come home to my, you know, I really came home to to see if I could connect with Mum. And I just said to the lads, you know, can you put the Palladium on and see what venues are available? And, the whole thing sold out in about five minutes and it was um to come home and have that kind of love and you know i know on tuesday i'm going to be you know heading back to la and and then you know two days off and then back doing shows at caesar's but i really really am going to miss my lovely country and the people that have treated me they treat me so well here and there's so much love and they talk to me like they've known me forever which they kind of have in a way and you get that it's exceptional, though, that you can do it. Most people go to Vegas. Last time I was hearing horror stories of people opening on Monday, being closed by Friday, restaurants opening on Tuesdays, they're gone by Saturday, they just kick the lot out. I mean, it's a brutal town where very few last. Well, um, it's actually very true what you said. It's, 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 there's so much selection and it, it really is genuinely. Uh, I'm very, very proud of my stay and uh, there's definitely talk of us you know, I'm here and there's definitely talk taking this into, well into 10 years and at Caesars and so I'm, I'm extremely proud and they know that, that my room, the Gossy room and the Gossy side bar has become a destination point at Caesars. It's right next to Nobu, you know, De Niro, so I'm in good company. Absolutely. I hope you realise how loved you are. I think this trip must have been especially difficult for you, but you've pulled it off brilliantly. In a sense, you've come across with humility and warmth, and most importantly, talent. You can't buy that talent, and we're so glad to have you back. Uh, I look forward to seeing the show tonight, and of course you're doing Manchester tomorrow. Congratulations on the Palladium. What an achievement. And come back soon, won't you? Yeah, I just want to say to everybody, you know, I'm a, I really am a proud Brit, and keep coming to see us at Caesars Palace, and and uh, it's, it's funny because I always ask how many Brits in the room and and, and people at Caesars Palace are always amazed how many Brits come and see me and and uh, just uh, if I make you proud in any way, I'm, I'm humbled by you and I love you very much and I'll see you soon. And don't be too sexy tonight. I'm going to be at the back of the room. Give us a, a, a man a chance. Come on. That I can't guarantee. Matt Goss, thank you. <laughs> Thanks.